Hey guys, Eclipse 14 here, and welcome back to Let's Play Final Fantasy 2. Well, I walked back from Bast in order to restore myself, and I am now off to be totally destroyed by this dungeon. Well, here we go. So, the only thing I didn't manage to cover was 5F. Starting off with two soldiers. Yeesh. Eh, it's not that bad, really. And I just couldn't do it because I had to- it's a to and from. And I was covering a bit of magic, which probably wasn't the best decision in the grand scheme of things, but I still needed to do it just to try to power up spells. And fortunately, I did get Guy up to Ice 3, where I got a power up without an intelligence down, which is good, as well as an antidote. Sweet. So, I just needed to backtrack again, pretty much like I did with the Snow Cavern a while back. In the end, it's necessary, considering how this game is played. And run. I'm just gonna see if I can get through this without a bunch of crap. Once it hits 2F, though, then things start getting problematic. Once I get back down to the first floor, though, it's easy. Chris, now I think about it, I have the Mithril Axe up, but Gordon still has the Spear. Why not just give him the Mithril Spear? I completely forgot about that. Um, yeah, let me take care of that after this. It would probably be a better weapon for him overall. So do that, and we're good. Alright, into the furnace I go. Now, fortunately, I did cover everything except the fifth floor, which has four treasure, and hopefully I'll be able to pick them out with relative ease. Everything else isn't that bad. The only real threats I have to worry about are... really the wizard ogres, because of all the magic, and very obviously the adamant toys, which I had three of them at, the, at least over the last two episodes, which is a train crash. Damn it, intelligence down. Got a power and agility up, though, for a period of guy, so that's good. Um, yeah, the adamant choice was really the big reason why I had to go back, because I was running low on magic, and if I ended up facing one without any ability to cast ice, I was very much shit out of luck. Okay, fortunately that did not poison, which would have been trouble, because Estus still level 1. Probably will stay that way for a bit too, unless I can just like, force its magic, which I might do, just to do it. God damn it, poison. Unfortunately, the poison won't work. Uh, the Estna won't work on poison when it's in combat. It has to be out of combat. Now, it will work in combat for darkness. Now, unfortunately, this is not darkness. It's a tear up. Fucking hell. At the very least, I'll let, uh, yeah, I'm gonna let Guy be the one to cast heal. All the time. Hope I don't have to do it all the time. God damn it! No option. It's 60 defense. I'm not smashing through that. For you, just pure guy. There's no way I'm smashing through that. The boss itself has 40 defense, which itself is gonna suck. Provided you. Uh, fortunately, I do have the Ancient Sword, still, which will cause Curse on Contact. But it's an inaccurate weapon, but if I can do that, I'll have roughly the same amount of defense as an Ogre, which has 17 defense. So it won't be terrible, I still gotta deal with 540 freaking HP. 
so it's gonna suck no matter what I do. I'll focus on two ogres for now, and just split them evenly. Though, I'm not terribly certain I'm gonna be able to just get through it with ease. At least the ogres will give me some decent HP boosts as time goes on, so I'm not super worried about it. I have a feeling Maria's gonna be the one that ends up uh, doing all the damage because of that damn Werebuster. <laughs> oh lord. Granted, I will put the Ancient Sword on as well for that Red Soul and just go through it. Ogres are down. Good. Hey, staff level up. That helps. Oh, wow. Got the helmets. Two of them. Now that I think about it, doesn't Gordon have one, or... No. Does he? He does not. He went on it. That helps. Wraiths. Ah, oh, crap. Uh, what do I do here? Because these guys will drain HP. Um, uh, I should probably run a fire spell with Maria. I'll go AoE for good measure, which should handle most of them. I'm gonna strike first. Good. Oh, I do take it out. If I remember it right, they only have 60 HP, but the draining can be a problem. Fearing got a target, which is good. I think guy was that. Yep. Perfect. Worked out in favor. Oh, for God's sakes, I went the wrong way. I'm a moron. Where rats? Sweet, I get to fumble with these idiots. Three hits for 157 to critical. I'm gonna have to hope for that multiple times against this red soul coming up. Oh god. I mean, at least I'm doing decently. I haven't really taken a crap ton of damage, and yes, I had to deal with one Adam and Toys and force a fire three AoE. But other than that, my match is going fine too. This I can just attack and not worry about it. Because these guys really don't do much other than uh, paralysis. Though. That's screw it. I was thinking of just casting magic to hit something from the back row, but in retrospect, probably not the best idea. I want my magic to run back. Not... Uh... Not the other way around. Whoops. But yeah, really, the whole reason for doing this is simply to do the main sort, uh, the main weapon skill to improve, as that will help. Damn it, intelligence down, but a power up, which is fine. But I hate when stats go down. If they go down, that causes problems, and it makes me sad. <sighs> Not surprised that this happened. Blink 3! How about that? This is one of those encounters I think it'd be best to just bail out. And I'm just gonna do that. Back away! Just go up to the fourth floor and we go with it. And this is actually where we left off because that was the treasure room that I picked up the mithril equipment and the Werebuster. Fucking hell. 
I'm not even sure if I can run from the Adam and Toys either, considering it was a boss enemy. And I really just attacked Gordon. <laughs> that was stupid of me. At least the damage is more guaranteed at this point. Anyway, these are the stairs you need. And that puts us up to 5F. That door's a trap. You see the chest in the very southwest. What the fuck? And you missed in an ambush. Nice job, you idiot. I'm forced to ice again. Freaking adamant toys, man. And yeah, it helps my ice out a little bit, but shit. I gotta have some MP in order to get out. That is nearly 250 damage with that, too. Alright, so we'll cover that chest in a minute. This room over here, with that door, is actually the other treasure room. So we'll go to that first. Right again. And ambushed. Awesome. Everybody missed. Well done, guys. I'll just run the standard attack route, because two of them aren't going to do anything. One HP. Are you serious? Well, at least I know it'll be guaranteed. Oh, wait a minute. Just let that... Just do that. Perfect. Worked out in favor. It's only a lot better than the last round. Alright, so, walk inside, there's three chests. These ones aren't as impressive as the ones in the previous episode. What you have is an eye drop, which covers blind, which you don't need because of Messina. The echo screen, which covers silence, which might be something you want to keep for a minute, unless Messina can cover it at this point. And an antidote, which likewise you have Messina. Alright, so with that done, there's just one more chest to go. But first, I have a bunch of were rats to face. Well, uh oh. No problem. Yeah, the only problem with dealing with five enemies is that you can't attack two of them as a result of the uh, row setup. Which is fine, because the others aren't going to do anything anyway, because they're not magic casters. If they were, that'd be a different story. And that's a wrap there. Okay, 14 minutes. We're actually doing pretty good for this. All I need to do now is simply head for this chest, which contains the gold armor. Unfortunately, it's trapped, and I'll discuss it in a minute. What do we have to face? Well, a particular nasty enemy known as Mines. You can face some balloons here, but more than likely, you'll face just Mines. Mines are much worse than the grenades. They have 190 HP, and will blow up for much more damage than the grenade does. Like the bomb family, they are weak to fire and lightning. Fortunately, I have level 3s of boat spells on purpose. So do that. I will likewise run a nice 3 for good measure on the balloon. Even though it does normal damage to it, 
it doesn't matter, it only has 20 HP, so it gets deleted anyway. Works for me! And with that, we have the gold armor in tow. And I'm actually going to give that to Guy. And the reason for it is because, even though it is heavy armor, it's actually, um, I think it does give a slight bit more defense than the mithril armor. But I do know it has a 19% evasion penalty and 30% magic penalty, as opposed to 14 and 20%, respectfully. Even still, it has a resistance to poison, which can help against the boss coming up. Wait a minute, do I have... Oh, I thought I lost attack for a second. And that's it. That's all the treasure of Kashawan Keep. 16 minutes now. I guess we'll just go ahead and head towards the boss, which all we need to do is head south, east to those stairs. Okay, two ogres. This isn't that terrible. Do that. We're good. Alright, I just wanted to handle it for good measure. Zero gill. Well, a mithril helmet again, and a mithril staff isn't too bad. Actually, Christ, now that I think about it, I have a silver pierce that I'm not going to use for a moment. Can we just give that to Gordon so he has some decent evasion? Wait, where'd I put it at? I'll check that Sharper than the bronze armor. Think about it here. Anyway. Land turtles and ogres. Seriously? Okay, um... A actually, this does give me an idea. I could keep them around... Because it's 35 defense for the land turtles as opposed to 40 for... The upcoming red soul. If I figure out my damage here, I can figure out what I can do against the red soul. Which is still gonna hurt, no matter what I do. Um... But, fortunately, I do have a little bit of help on my end, because... Obviously, you have the gold shield and armor, which covers poison, but that has the lowest chance of, uh... You know what, I'll run an ice three on the Lion Turtle, just to have one of them out of the picture. Um... Yeah, it's a 15% chance, if I remember correctly, for the Red Soul to cast the Poison spell at level 8. The others have a slightly higher chance. I think Fire is the most, but if you can get Poison, it works out nicely. Now, note that I also have the Diamond Shield on Furion because of some stupid luck with a Land Turtle. Okay, 16 damage with Maria. 9... Nine. Okay, so with 35 defense, I have that kind of storm. Um, so it would be smart for me to have an ancient sword. I also should have cured Maria. I'm an idiot. Not that it matters, that actually helped in the long run. I'm just going to... Quick Blast and Ice 3 and finish this off. I don't know how low the HP is, I just want to get this over with. So, I'll just run the ice, finish it off right there. That should give me some HP, which would be nice to have. Vitality and HP, and sword level up. Vitality, HP, Vitality, Intelligence, MP, and HP. Very, very... Excellent. I should say. Um... 
I'll just use some of these potions. And kind of get set up. Um, yeah, let me go ahead and de-equip the potions, because I didn't realize they would go for yourself. In the meantime, though, I will substitute this Ancient Sword for Furion. As well as... Mm, didn't want to have anything else. Actually do a potion, just in case. Everybody else should be good, although I will use that one potion. I'll at least get Maria up. Jeez, that doesn't do much. Um, let me just do Gordon's cure. Get that to 158. Brand, I still have a little bit to go. I at least want to have full HP before I do this. And there we go. Works for me. Step on down. Enter this door. And right there we face the red soul. We're at 21 and a half minutes, so this will be covered in the next episode, and along with the backtrack back. So with that said, I'll close things here. Thanks for watching, I'll see you next time.